Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to True Crime Loser. How's it going? So today I wanted to do a video on the first night of Chris Watts' interrogation. I am a sucker for a long, unedited interrogation video. And so I was ecstatic to get the whole, I don't know, was it seven hours, including the polygraph and everything. And so I'm probably going to do a video on each chunk of that, starting with this video of this is the first I watched it last night. The first night he's talked to that one FBI guy and they're going over Chris's written statement that he had. So the FBI guy will read a few sentences of Chris's statement and then he'll ask him. And I think that this is a really interesting interrogation because they want Chris to cooperate. They don't want to scare him into getting a lawyer or to not talking. And so he kind of humors Chris's stupid story for a while. And then a few times in the hour, he'll turn up the heat and then he'll kind of back off a little bit. And it's just kind of a... You know, doesn't wanna doesn't wanna freak Chris out. All right, so let's just get into it. First, the infamous ticking clock. God, I love that clock. Whoever, I want to buy lunch to whoever decided to put a ticking ass clock in the room. It is so great. It almost makes lie, any lie sound absurd because if Chris is just lying like he always does, is like, yeah, yeah, I went to the Rockies game. Normally, that lie would come out nice and smooth and easy. Yeah, like I went to the Rockies game. But with that clock, it's like, yeah, I went to the Rockies game. Tick, tock, tick, tock. I swear I went to the Rockies game. Tick, tock. I like honestly went to the Rockies game. Tick, tock. It's so great. I love that ticking clock. He was in there for a lot of seconds and he heard every single one of them. Um, again, I'm not even going to get into Chris's written statements because it's just stupid. Um, one thing that jumps out as I watched the whole interrogation is, so Chris is very used to lying to normal civilians. And in his mind, I think he thinks he's really good at it. He's been doing it his whole life. It's always worked. And I don't think he was, knew what he was in for dealing with police interrogator, interrogators and especially FBI interrogators. And so when Chris Watts lies in the real world, he's used to whoever he's lying to jumping in at that normal time right after the lie. To Most people, even if they know someone's lying, they, they want to avoid an awkward social interaction so say chris say someone asks chris to do something and chris lies and said he can't because he's going to the rockies game it's like hey chris can you help me you know move that chest of drawers and chris goes oh no i can't i'm going to the rockies game i'm gonna jump right in and say oh okay Th that's all right thanks anyway and that's a normal that timing chris is very used to but the FBI agents aren't playing in that social realm. They're just not. They're as they're as interested in the silences and how Chris acts right after he says something than they are as he's saying whatever dumb shit that he's saying. And so this just throws Chris completely off his lying timing. So Chris will be like... Um, you know, let's just go back to the, Chris will be like, yeah, like I went to the Rockies game. And instead of the FBI agent being like, oh, okay, so you went to the Rockies game, the FBI agent just stares at him. And then that, that is very uncomfortable for Chris. He's not used to someone doing that in, in his like lying rhythm. So then he feels like he needs to add to the story so he'll be like yeah i went to the rockies game fbi guy gives him complete silence and it, and then he keeps going oh it was a work thing and it it was just for a few hours 
and then the FBI guy gives him silence. And it's just it's just hilarious to watch Chris and also Chris they say lying people do hand gestures so Chris, just way too many hand gestures. So as Chris is telling stories he's going like this and he just looks like a a mime that's tanking. Um another thing I really like is the FBI agent has no problem just asking the same question four times in a row. He'll ask a question, Chris will give him his his non-answer where he just kind of stumbles around and then the FBI guy will just do it exactly the same question. So one of those questions was, he goes, so then who are you worried about? And Chris is like, you know, rambles and goes oh you know any anyone that hasn't contacted me I'll blah 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 and it makes no sense and then he kind of peters out and the FBI guy goes so then who are you worrying about and you see Chris being like oh god and then again he he and it's really hard to just concoct a story out of thin air that sounds realistic. That's why when the few people that can do it, they become fiction writers and they make a lot of money because it's a really cool thing to be able to do. But Chris is just a dumbass. And he's just, a, he's a blue collar oil rig worker. And I grew up in Grand Junction, Colorado, and I was around a lot of the roughneckers and oil workers, and they are hardworking blue collar, you know, good at their job, good at their hands, but none of them are going to write a novel that's, you know, and, and so Chris just starts struggling. He, he didn't, I don't think he thought he was going to have to lie so much. You know, if, unless you watch all the police interrogations like us, I think you think, well, it's, it is what it is like on TV where it's, you know, they ask you, they might get a little mad, but they don't think that they're going to wear you down for three hours and just make you talk about everything that you are just hoping not to have to talk about and then just giving you that silence, just that brutal silence. All right, what else do I got here? Um... Oh, yeah, so this is one, I wrote down one of my favorite quotes that Chris had that just kept going because the, the FBI guy wouldn't give him anything in return. And so Chris goes, this is something that I would never do. And the FBI guy just stares at him. And then, he, and then Chris goes, ever. And then the FBI dude just stares at him. And then there's a pause and Chris goes, at all. And it's, <laughs> I think it hit him maybe for the first time in this first interrogation with the FBI guy that he is way over his head. He had no idea what he was in for. You know, he was just outmatched in every way. And um, and there's just great moments where the FBI guy asks him, he just straight up asks him in a very calm voice, he goes, are you telling me the truth? And he goes, why should I believe you? And Chris goes on about how he's a trustworthy person and, you know, just all this bullshit. And... Uh, you know, Chris goes, I'm not that person. I've never been that person. And it just doesn't, it just makes no sense. And um, I think, I'm not going to go in. There's a lot of YouTube videos with all the strategies that police interrogators use. And a lot of them, what, what strategy they use is dependent on the situation that the person being interrogated is in, right? So their main goal is to keep the person talking. They don't want them to get a lawyer. They just want them to talk. So if that means they need to kind of act like their friend, 
they'll do that. But what's great about Chris is Chris is going with the narrative that they let, I'm the victim, my wife and kids left me, they went somewhere, and, you know, I want them to be found just as much as anyone. The funny thing about going with that is the FBI, they know that he has to, whether he did it or not, they know he has to play the role of concerned husband and father that's working with the police. Because if Chris goes, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to be interrogated. I'm not taking the polygraph. It's like, all right, well, now you're definitely the number one suspect. So they, they do this very good balancing act of, hey, we're all just here trying to find trying to find who, you know, took your kids. And so you're going to work with us, right? And so Chris, in a way, is just stuck. He has to pretend that he's working with them. And I can't imagine the feeling of just him leaving this interrogation, knowing that there's a polygraph the next day. I mean, can you imagine what that feels like? Is you murder your wife and kids, you go in for an FBI interrogation, it's way more thought out and way more awkward than you thought it was going to be. And then you know the next day you're going back in and they're going to test you if, to see if you're lying. And he knows that he is a total lying piece of shit. I mean, he knows more than anyone. And I would love to know if he got any sleep that night. If he somehow searched how to beat a polygraph. I would just love to know what he did that night. And it blows my mind that he came back and did the polygraph. I figured... I figured he'd pull a Scott Peterson and the next day say, I'm not taking the polygraph or, you know, I'm too distraught. I can't sit in this room. We need to be out looking for him. If he, he, if he actually thought that he could beat the polygraph, then he even blows my mind at his confidence in his own lying because he's not even good. I wouldn't even put him top five liars in interrogations that I've watched. And we, you know, there's only a limited amount on YouTube. But okay, so this, I think this, that concludes this video. That this is just the short little first chunk hour with the, with the one guy FBI agent. And so now I will move the next video. I'm going to move into the pre polygraph interview with that great. Uh, woman FBI agent I think that she just kicked his ass in this next one so follow along true crime loser thanks for watching thanks for everyone that's subscribing and commenting I appreciate the support yeah we're gonna unpack this whole thing so thanks for hanging out with me true crime loser out have a good day